All it took was a big mouth and a huge ego for this Bloods gang leader to ruin his boxing career and lose all respect on the streets. Tyson, and you know it. You hit me, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. You want for a mama, I'd have shot you, punk. They all began back in 1986 when a young 19-year-old Mike Tyson, having fought 19 matches, knocked out all opponents within the first few rounds despite having less than 14 days gap between most fights. However, Tyson would for the first time in his professional career fail to keep this streak against James Tillis. See Tillis delivering the left jab and following with the right. He is not running away from Tyson, and Tyson goes to work on the body. Yeah, that by punching the body, you can take all that movement away from James for Tyson. Look how low he gets to This is an important learning experience for Mike Tyson. He's going to have to be able to handle a quick Tillis to get to the top of the event. He is right now. Yeah, it was distracted before he got punched. While Tyson emerged victorious with a unanimous decision, it marked the first time he didn't knock out his opponent. How disappointed are you that the knockout string is over? Not at all. If anything, I got, you know, I feel relieved and I'm confident if I wanted to, I couldn't have knocked them out. Tyson had never needed more than six rounds to dismantle his opponents, and 12 times he did it within one. This served as a glimmer of hope for the rest of the heavyweight division, despite the damage he inflicted on his opponents. A New York Bloods gang leader, Mitch Green, took this as his opportunity to face the Kid Dynamite. Watch the speed! Watch the agility! Watch the power! I ain't no joke! My name is Mitch Blood Green! Now you heard my fight! Watch my smoke! Mitch Blood Green was one of the very first fighters to utilize the new age of digital recorders using video messages to trash talk Tyson to get into the fight. How you win? You want Kyle Fred tell you, you want to fight the mic? Fight me, baby. Holy Fifth, such his nose, baby. You want to fight me? Fight me. George Foreman, want me to commit some homicide? Fight me, baby. Punch drunk old fool. I'm going to kill me. Surprisingly enough, this was all Mitch needed to land him a shot, the hottest prospect in the world of boxing, as just four days after the fight with Tillis Tyson was announced to face Green, who was at the time one spot ahead of Tyson in the WBC heavyweight rankings. But you see, unlike most boxers, Mitch Green was a prominent New York gang player in the 1970s, who by the age of 17 had witnessed his father lose his life in a bizarre shootout not long before being shot twice himself. By this time, his ties to the street were too pronounced as he was now known as the King of New York Street Gangs by the NYPD for his role as the leader in many deadly Bloods gang crimes. As a gang leader and prize fighter, Green quickly made a name for himself in the heavyweight division, winning his first 16 fights in a row, including a victory over the tough Floyd Jumbo Cummings in 1983. The muscular 6'5 big man was racking up copious tournament success, including several New York Golden Gloves. Despite his early success, Green suffered his first defeat in 1985 when he lost a 12-round decision to Trevor Burbick in a bid for the United States Boxing Association title. Green rebounded from the loss with wins over Purcell Davis and Young Lewis before facing off against Mike Tyson. However, according to a May 20th publication in the Los Angeles Times of 1986, Mitch Green angrily threatened to withdraw from his scheduled 10-round heavyweight fight with Mike Tyson after learning he would receive less than one-sixth of the lucrative purse guaranteed his popular opponent. His anger flared after learning he was to be paid $30,000 plus $5,000 in expenses compared to more than $200,000 for Tyson. Although eventually Green calmed down a few hours later and said he would go ahead with the bout. Their fight, which took place at Madison Square Garden, was Tyson's first match at a prestigious boxing venue and also his first to be covered by a large television network. Yet the occasion didn't change the traditional no robe, no socks attire, as he was all business and had a personal vendetta to settle with the wide-mouthed Mitch Green. Blood Green was a gang leader. They say he had over a hundred men in his gang. Right now he needs some of them. Here we see White, the, the mouthpiece come out with that left. While Green had all the physical advantages, Tyson's superior boxing skills and speed negated the gap round after round after round, backing up Green from the opening bell. Notably, Green managed to knock out one of Tyson's gold teeth during the fight. And now we see um, Mitch Green. He landed with a good uppercut there. Green just trying to tie Tyson up. And a couple of good shots by Mitch Green. His best rally of the fight right here. Look here, now he's caught. Tyson, four or five times, and Tyson for the first time seems a little... The fight became so routine by the closing stages that the crowd knew they were witnessing a foregone conclusion with Tyson smiling. Let's be honest though, surviving 10 rounds with Tyson, he's still a beast.
Green went the distance, didn't get knocked down once, knocked a Tyson tooth out, and wasn't all beat up. That's a win against Tyson. However, that was not the case as Tyson claimed he had carried Green the entire 10-round distance on purpose to punish him for as long as possible. Were you satisfied with it? Almost definitely. I didn't, um, I don't want to sound rudish or anything. I didn't want to knock him out or anything. I wanted to put a lot of pressure on him and make him decide himself whether he'd give up or not. Whether it was true or not, Green's pride and reputation were hurt. He was willing to do whatever it took to restore a sliver of respect in the streets and amongst his peers. Green retreated from boxing after the Tyson loss and returned to the street where he earned a living from selling drugs. However, he always planned to one day get Tyson, who had progressed to become one of the most dominant heavyweight champions of all time back in the ring. In the early hours of August 23, 1988, Mitch Green got wind that Tyson was shopping at Dapper Don's, a local clothing store close to his territory. For Green, Tyson stepping into his turf in the early hours of the morning was a liberty he could not accept without losing face. As Tyson was chilly in the store, Mitch Green burst through the door on his own demanding Tyson either give him a rematch or empty his pockets right there on the spot and the rest was history to be told. Spectators said that the fight was short, violent, and very one-sided. To run up on a boxer that you know is a boxer, like a world champion fighter, and try to fight him, that's silly. That's silly. But then Mitch grabbed his shirt and apparently went for his pocket because his wallet fell out. Mitch Green threw the first blow. There is no CCTV footage of the incident, only an alleged photo of both men facing off, however. There were many accounts of what happened that all aligned, except Green's account where he claimed the heavyweight champion punched him and ran. Who threw the first punch here? He hit me. And I didn't see his punch coming. And he did not knock me down or nothing. I saw him do like this and run. He ran. However, according to a 1988 publication, both men would give their account of the incident with Green maintaining that Tyson threw the first punch. While Tyson insists, he was just trying to leave. He told me we could go again, said Green. He started to turn his rings and then he sucker punched me. He hit me with a cheek shot and then he ran away. The heavyweight champion of the world ran away. Tyson blamed Green for the fight, later telling the police that Green was clearly agitated and that he only threw punches in defense. Peeing five stitches in Green's face and closed his old opponent's left eye. Green was certain the Tyson scuffle, which became mainstream news around the world, would add enough public intrigue to get his rival back in the ring. But unfortunately, he became further ridiculed by the likes of comedian Steve Havey. Mitch was on the news for two weeks telling the same lie. All I did was, I walked in the store. A humiliated Green would later seek revenge in court by suing Tyson for $25 million in 1997, nine years after the duel at Dapper Dan's. A six-person jury in the New York State Supreme Court ruled unanimously that Green had provoked Tyson and reduced the initial $100,000 agreed on by 55%, yielding the $45,000 figure. However, after 35 years, Tyson has apologized for the incident in the interview with rapper Yayo on his hotboxing podcast. Like Mitch Green at Dapper Dan. I'm sorry I did that. Is that nigga? <laughs> I believe Why are you the, sorry that he talked mad shit? I believe he's a born-again Christian, though.